Well, we don't normally do reviews on drone and phone, but this week is very special as our sister show, Tech China, and its host, Felix, has told me to come down to the beach here on Lama and bring a wetsuit with me. What have we got today, Felix? Hi, DJ. I got an underwater, underwater drone with me today. That yeah. sounds very cool. Underwater drone. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so it's a 4K drone, so you can shoot a lot of spectacular footage with this underwater. Yeah. Okay, let's get it unboxed and give it a yeah. go. Unlike other underwater drones on the market, the Bicky from Robosea has no tether and claims it can dive to 60 meters. The drone operates with Wi-Fi on the surface, controlled by your phone or by using a hand controller in the water. It's also different in that it uses a plastic fishtail to power it through the water. I'm losing it. I'm going to have to give you my phone and go swim after it. It's an exciting device for someone like me living in Hong Kong and surrounded by water, but does it live up to the same promise as its aerial counterparts? Robosy lent us a beta version to give it a test. It keeps disconnected. We haven't had much luck today. We're going to try it again on Friday, see if we can get any better results. But today it's been very difficult to control. In fact, almost impossible to control, either with the controller with Felix on the beach or me using the controller in the water. It seems to have a mind of its own and it likes to go out. Now we are, as you can see, in quite a strong current and it does say don't use it in a strong current. So we're going to need to test it in a swimming pool or somewhere where it's a lot calmer. But certainly if I didn't have my wetsuit today, we would have said goodbye to this thing. Okay, we're having a bit more success now. The Bicky's in here, and if I just turn it on here, you can see I can actually control it. We have a controller, that a joystick here that I move up and down, um, and I can go faster and slower here on the left and right. And then I can also hit record, uh, take photographs with it, and there's putting the, the lights on, lights on or off, uh, starting and stopping it and returning back to home. While testing in the swimming pool, I found a setting in the app to turn on sound manipulation. This allows me to control the drone with the hand device while using a clicking sound to send its instructions. I also found you can set a dive pattern in the app, which allowed the drone to leave its Wi-Fi connection and go on a predetermined route underwater. Both features were not clear in the simplistic instructions that came with the beta model. Hopefully it'll have a more detailed manual before it ships. So it's more or less doing what I'm asking it to do right now, which is more successful than we had before. But I'm very close to it. I'm in a very controlled environment. <laughs> So we brought it out to this beautiful location on Lama to try and do a proper dive with a diver here. But still we cannot get it to dive. We have managed to get control of it uh, on and off with this. It is a bit sticky, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But so far no luck in getting the thing to go down. We've also run out of power. Now it's meant to last quite a long time uh, and I did charge it all of yesterday but it seems that it didn't power up properly so that might be part of our problem. The battery should last two hours, but I discovered that it wouldn't charge from the mains. Switching to a USB power bank did work. With it fully charged, I headed down to a jetty in Aberdeen with Natasha and set it off amongst the fishing boats. This time, the hand controller failed, and I had to abandon the test after just a few minutes. It should be making a clicking noise when I'm pressing it and turning on after five seconds but it seems to be dead. It could be that the power from this is also not been charging, though it has been giving me fully charged signal. Um, so I need to go back and test that. Hopefully on the fifth attempt, it has to work. we're gonna Hopefully, get this thing crossed. going. We sent the controller back to Robosea and they sent us a new one. Jack was along this time to bear witness. Oh, it's working, yeah? Yeah, so we got the noise, that's good. It's moving. It's moving, okay. This is good news so far. So let's take it out and see how we do. In this test, the Bicky performed well on the surface, but again, we could not get it to dive under the water. We were pretty ready to give up at this point, but then... 
It turned out that the good people at Bicky told us that the reason it wasn't diving was because we didn't have a special weight that goes on the bottom that is needed for salt water. So let's go try it again. Finally, the Bicky dived, responding to the hand controller. It plummeted out of sight and then returned as promised to the surface once I took my hand off the controller. It was hard to control in the sea. I made a simple attempt at diving under a passing canoe, but was not able to keep it on course. I love the potential of this underwater drone, but RoboSea still have a way to go before it's ready for the mass market. Well, after six attempts, we finally get the RoboSea to work. Turns out we just needed this little weight on the bottom, plus the other things we got wrong, unfortunately. The sea is very murky today, so not great footage, but massive potential for this thing. Looking forward to trying it out on a beautiful, clear day with some fantastic fish.